Let's talk about ducks. Milk ducks, that is. Join me as we cover ductal pathology on a breast ultrasound. First, let's dive into a little anatomy lesson. Lactiferous ducts are the milk ducts in the breast. And the breast contains many milk ducts. And these lactiferous ducts transport milk from the acinar cells, which make the milk, all the way through a series of ducts to the nipple. There's many types of lactiferous ducts, and they vary in size and location. Types of lactiferous ducts include ductals, intralobular ducts, extralobular ducts, interlobular ducts, the lactiferous sinus, and the collecting duct. First, let's cover the smallest ducts in the breast, and these are known as ductals. And these transport milk from the acinar cells where the milk is made to the intralobular ducts. The intralobular ducts are the next series of lactiferous ducts. Note that intra means within, so these are found within the lobule. And intralobular ducts transport milk from the ductals to the extralobular ducts. Another type of duct I'd like to talk about are interlobular ducts. It's really easy to mix up intralobular ducts and interlobular ducts. For interlobular ducts, inter means between the lobules. So that's the main difference between these two terms. Intralobular ducts are within the lobule and interlobular ducts are between the lobules. And the interlobular ducts are the ducts that transport milk between the lobes. And they transport milk from the extralobular ducts to the lactiferous sinus. So on our journey through the milk ducts, starting with the smallest ducts, the ductals, the milk travels from the acinar cells through the ductals to the intralobular duct, that means within the lobule, and then travels out of the lobule to the extralobular duct. Extralobular ducts are ducts located immediately outside the lobule, and they transport milk from the intralobular ducts, the ducts that are inside the lobule, to the interlobular ducts, which are outside of the lobule. Our next type of duct is the lactiferous sinus, and this is an area that collects milk from the lobes via the interlobular ducts and then transports the milk to the collecting duct. The lactiferous sinus is also called the ampulla, and each collecting duct has its own lactiferous sinus before branching into the smaller ducts and the lobes. Next, let's talk about the collecting duct. The collecting duct is a connection between the lactiferous sinus and the nipple, and this transports milk from the lactiferous sinus and then out through the nipple. There are 15 to 20 collecting ducts in the nipple that travel to the end of the nipple and feed milk to the baby. What to know about this is each collecting duct belongs to a lobe. So one lobe of the breast has multiple lobules in it and all those lobules form one ductal system and make up one lobe of the breast. And that lobe ends in this collecting duct, which attaches to the nipple itself. And you have 15 to 20 of those in the breast. So 15 to 20 lobes with their collecting duct that ends in the nipple. Milk production begins in the acinar cells, which are the little red circles on the breast lobule. The breast lobule is the black circle on this diagram. And those acinar cells make the milk. And then that milk next travels to the ductal and next travels to the intralobule duct. Remember that intra means within that lobule and then it travels outside of that lobule to the extra lobular duct which then connects up to the interlobular duct which is going to transport the milk between the lobules which next connects up to the lactiferous sinus or the ambula and all of that ends in the collecting duct at the nipple. Note that the blue circle on this diagram is a breast lobe and the black circle is a lobule. 
and there are 15 to 20 lobes within a breast. It's important to talk about the breast tissue behind the nipple. There's no subcutaneous fat directly behind the nipple. The glandular tissue connects directly with the nipple because the glandular tissue contains all of the milk ducts, which need to connect to the nipple in order to get milk out of the breast to the baby. So when you're scanning, keep in mind that there is no fat directly behind the nipple and you'll see only glandular tissue in this area. Let's discuss the normal appearance of milk ducts on an ultrasound. On an ultrasound, normal milk ducts are filled with fluid. It's mostly a watery substance, and this is to keep the lining of the milk ducts moist in case they're ever needed for breastfeeding. A normal milk duct measures two to three millimeters in AP dimension. The ultrasound appearance of a milk duct is anechoic, watery fluid inside. If there's echoes within a duct, this can indicate either a proteinaceous debris, milk products, or some sort of ductal pathology. You've spotted a mass in the breast. Now what should you do? First, you want to determine is the mass solid, cystic, or complex. A solid mass is going to be hypoechoic and may or may not have vascularity associated with it. A cystic mass is going to be anechoic or it may have mobile or non-mobile debris inside. It's going to be avascular with posterior enhancement. And a complex mass is going to be a mixture of these. It's going to have both solid and cystic components to it, multiple echogenicities, heterogeneous, and possibly vascularity in the solid components. The next thing to determine is, is the mass ductal in origin? So carefully look at each end of the mass. Can you visualize any sort of milk duct coming off the end of that mass? If so, carefully scrutinize to determine, is this solid material that you found in the duct? Is it debris that you found in the duct? So look for vascularity, look for any movement of the contents. This is gonna help you determine, is this just debris in a segment of duct or is it a true mass? And then also you wanna look, if it's solid, look for branch pattern and duct extension, which we're gonna go over in a minute. And finally, you wanna characterize the mass. So look at its margins. Is it circumscribed? Does it have angular, lobulated, or spiculated margins? Does it have a horizontal or vertical orientation in the tissue? What is its posterior echo pattern? So does it have shadowing or enhancement behind it? Does the mass have any vascularity associated with it? Is it avascular, meaning no vascularity, hypervascular, or hypovascular? Is there a host response of the tissue around the mass? Does it have a thick echogenic halo, which is known as desmoplasia? Are there any calcifications present? These are all things you wanna be looking at as you look at this mass on the ultrasound. It's important when you find a mass in the breast to determine if it has any relationship to the ducts. So carefully scrutinize each edge of the mass to determine if you can visualize a milk duct. If you see a milk duct, its relationship to the mass should be demonstrated on the ultrasound images and try to elongate the duct as much as possible with the mass inside of it to show the relationship. You want to look for your branch pattern and your ductal extension and every mass that's in the breast, regardless of the distance from the nipple, should be interrogated carefully to determine if it's ductal in origin because this is essential for characterizing the mass. Let's talk about some tips and tricks for figuring out if an area inside a milk duct is debris versus a solid mass. And a solid mass and debris inside a duct can have a very similar appearance. So to distinguish between the two, first you wanna turn on your color Doppler. Debris is gonna be avascular, have no vascularity, where solid material is going to display vascularity. And most commonly, ductal pathology will be hypervascular. Secondly, you wanna watch for movement. Debris can be mobile. So try changing the patient position and watch to see if there's any movement of the contents inside the duct. And thirdly, look for calcifications. Solid material in a duct plus calcifications, this is suspicious for DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ. Next, let's talk about ductal pathology. Types of ductal pathology are ductal ectasia, which are dilated ducts, 
an interductal mass, uh, most commonly a papilloma, periductal mastitis, which is also known as plasma cell mastitis, and then cancer, so ductal carcinoma in situ, and invasive ductal carcinoma. Symptoms associated with ductal pathology are an inverted nipple, nipple discharge, palpable lump, or redness, or pain of the nipple or areola. Our first ductal pathology is ductal ectasia, which is a dilation of a milk duct. A normal lactiferous duct should measure less than two to three millimeters in the anterior posterior dimension, or AP dimension. When we see ductal ectasia, either bilaterally or in multiple ducts or ductal segments, this is most commonly related to benign disease. When we see ductal ectasia in a solitary duct or a solitary ductal segment, this can be suspicious for malignancy. Causes of ductal ectasia are cancer within the duct, uh, intraductal mass, or inflammation and fibrosis. Ultrasound findings of ductal ectasia are an AP dimension of a duct measuring greater than two to three millimeters, possibly having debris within the duct, possibly having solid material, such as a mass in a duct, hypervascularity when solid material is present, sometimes calcifications. It can be within a solitary duct or ductal segment, or it can be in multiple ducts, or it can be bilateral. You may or may not see thickening of ductal walls. Our most common interductal mass is known as a papilloma, and a papilloma is a solid mass found within the milk ducts. It can be found intraductally within a duct or intracystically within a cystic space. Most commonly they're benign, although they can be malignant, and papillomas are the most common cause of bloody nipple discharge. They're most common in women in their 30s, and the ultrasound appearance is a solid mass within a duct or a cyst. They're hypoechoic, and their characteristic ultrasound feature is hypervascularity. They're usually small, uh, less than two centimeters, usually found near the subarelar region. They can be solitary, meaning just one within a duct, which is the most common, or multiple within a duct, which is known as papillomatosis. Periductal mastitis, also known as plasma cell mastitis, is our next type of ductal pathology. And this is when the milk duct displays inflammation, thickened ductal walls, fibrosis, and large rod-like shaped calcifications form and are classically seen on the mammogram image. Since the calcifications are large, you can also see them on the ultrasound image. And this can lead to non-lactational mastitis. So patients present with nipple inversion, nipple discharge, and or they can present with symptoms of infection, such as redness and pain. And this occurs in the subarelar region. Risk factors for this are smoking, diabetes, and obesity. And the ultrasound appearance is ductal ectasia, so dilated ducts with internal debris. You may or may not see wall thickening of the ducts. There may be a defined abscess or pocket of infected fluid on the ultrasounds. Usually the ducts are going to be avascular and you may see those large rod-like calcifications. What are the signs of tumor extension within a duct? When cancer fills a milk duct, there are two ways or directions that the cancer can spread through that ductal system. It can either spread towards the nipple, and we call this duct extension, and this is where the mass has projections and they extend radially within the duct towards the nipple, or the mass can spread away from the nipple, and this is called branch pattern, and this is where the mass has projections within the duct that branch away from the nipple. This is an example on ultrasound of branch pattern, and this is where the tumor is extending away from the nipple through the milk duct. What you wanna do when you find a ductal mass is you want to look for the blind end. The blind end is going to be the rounded edge of the mass and you want to determine is the blind end near the nipple or is it away from the nipple and then you want to look at the opposite end of the mass within the duct and look for projections. This means angular margins, speculations, this is branches of where the cancer is trying to 
spread. And this tells you, is this cancer trying to go towards the nipple or is it trying to go away from the nipple throughout the breast tissue? For branch pattern, the mass is extending away from the nipple. The blind end, which is the rounded edge of the mass is located near the nipple and the branching end of this mass, this is the pointed end with the little branches coming off of it, are located away from the nipple. So we know that this mass is extending through the ducts away from the nipple. This is our next ultrasound example. And the first thing I wanna do is look for my blind end, which is the rounded edge. And then I wanna look for my branching end, which is my pointed edge of my mass within the duct. This image is an example of duct extension. And this is where the solid tissue in this duct is extending radially towards the nipple. This is my branching or pointed edge of my mass. The blind end, which is the rounded edge, is located away from the nipple and it's not displaying any branching. So I know that this mass is extending towards the nipple instead of away since the branching end, which is the pointed edge, is located near the nipple. Ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, is the most common type of non-invasive breast cancer. And this is cancer that is associated with the duct, but it has not extended outside the basement membrane of the duct. So it's still contained by the duct. DCIS can cause nipple discharge. It's usually clear or bloody in color. 30 to 50% of DCIS cases progress on to invasive ductal carcinoma. Ultrasound appearance of DCIS are micro calcifications. These are very tiny little calcifications. You may also see echogenic material within a dilated duct on ultrasound. And you wanna look for your branch pattern and your duct extension. It can have internal vascularity, and it may also just present as a subtle area of shadowing with calcifications. We see this when DCIS is present in conjunction with invasive carcinoma, meaning parts of it are DCIS and parts of it are invasive ductal carcinoma. Our last type of ductal pathology is invasive ductal carcinoma or IDC. This is the most common type of breast cancer. This accounts for 75% of breast cancer cases. Most breast cancers are ductal in origin. And this is breast cancer that has expanded outside of the duct. It's grown outside the basement membrane of the duct and is no longer contained by that duct. And this is where you start to see a mass on an ultrasound. Symptoms of this are a palpable lump, skin dimpling, nipple inversion. You may have nipple discharge that's clear or bloody. You may have skin changes if this has proliferated and involved the skin, such as redness, thickening, or the beauty orange appearance. Ultrasound appearance can be one or more of the following. Irregular margins, such as spiculated, angular, or microlobulated margins a taller than wide orientation, an area of shadowing that's visualized in two planes, vascularity, hypochoic to markedly hypochoic, heterogeneous, microcalcifications, a thick echogenic halo, which is known as desmoplasia, which is a host response of the tissue to the cancer, posterior shadowing, and or central necrosis. Any one or many of these can be present in combination with each other. And every IDC mass looks different in appearance on an ultrasound. If you enjoyed today's video, stay tuned for our next videos on Wednesday. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.